So today we're going to be taking a look at how to make this. This is the October Tooling Challenge uh, on our website, brandedbisonco.com. You can get the pattern for this there. It's just a simple maple leaf. Uh, you can also take any maple leaf that you can find on the internet and do the same exact thing that we're going to show you today. So first, what, let's talk about a little bit of what we got going on here. So the insides here, you know, that's tooled like a lot like the typical Sheridan style carving that you might see for, with the floral work. What we're going to be focusing on today are these pockets right here how to make those pockets, how to make it raise up like that. If you look right here, it actually lifts up and raises up. There's a good one right there. And that adds a lot of depth to it. And that's a good start on how to do this extreme lifting. That's what I call it. You won't hear anybody else call it extreme lifting. So, um, but let's show you how to do that. So first, we're going to be using two different tools today. This is a Barry King lifter. Now, I want to tell you up front, don't let the fact that it's Barry King scare you. If you don't have one of these or you don't want to spend the money on it, I'm also going to show you how to use this. Right? So this is a Barry King lifter. It's my favorite one. It's got a nice wide foot on it. It really allows you to get in there and move a lot of leather. Um, so, you know, I love this. If you want to pick one up, I think they're in the $30 range for this, this one. The set's in like the $90 range, something like that. Don't quote me on that. I'm just working from memory. If you don't have one of these or you don't want to pick up one of these, this works too. Now, it's not going to work as well, and it's going to take a little more time, but you can get the same results as what you see here. So this is called a Deerfoot Modeling Tool, and you can see on the end of it, it's got a slant to it. Both ends have the slant like that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, let's start with the, the Deerfoot. I've got the tape on there because I use this for hours on end, and those ridges kind of bite into my finger. I don't really like it, so that helps mute that down a little bit so ignore my my redneck engineering there so what we're going to do this sandpaper is super fine it doesn't have the the grit well, i guess it's 220 it looks like so it's super fine um, get the finest the least aggressive sandpaper you can get all we want to do and i'm going to do it with the big end so you can really see what we're doing here i'm going to sit that slant flat on the sandpaper and i'm just going to drag it I'm not going back and forth this way. I'm just going to put it down. I'm going to drag it. And the other thing is I'm not rolling it. This is just, just like stropping your swivel knife. We're not going to roll it. We're just going to put it down flat and pull. Put it down flat and pull. I'm going to do that to both sides. Now you notice it was only like, what, maybe a half, you know, three to a half dozen strokes on there, three to six strokes. And I can already feel an edge on that. Now, mine already had an edge because I do this pretty frequently, but um, it doesn't take much. Just do a little bit. You want to just kind of bump that leading edge right there and see if you can feel it, uh, feel the sharpness of it. If you can, then you're good to go. If you can't, then maybe do one or two more strokes on it. Just go slow. So what we're going to do next... So we're going to strop this just like we would a swivel knife. Flip it around, do the same thing on the other side. Now you notice I pull and lift. Pull and lift. We do not roll it, otherwise you're going to round that end off and it won't be sharp. All right, so this is one that I've worked on already. What I've done here is I, I've used the steep edge beveler along the outside. I used the traditional beveler to give us that shadow. I used the thumbprint to do the shading on the inside. I used a leaf liner to create these veins. Uh, and then I've got a, a veiner, just a, a smooth veiner, very sharp. And we create those with, with the veiner. The, but I didn't want to do all that on camera today because we wanted to keep it short. Just want to show you how to use the deer foot and the lifter to create the pockets. And I've already done one here. Now first I want to mention this, this piece of leather is wetter than what I would normally tool it. Um, that makes it a lot easier to move the leather. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. It means you can, 
you can do the undercuts much easier but it also means that if you push too hard you can blow these pockets out and you can rip it so uh, it's you know just go go slowly until you get a feel for it but this is what we're trying to create right here I just did this one so you can see there's a there's a pucker it, it lifts up right there and then you've got that undercut right there so what we're gonna do I'm gonna use the small end to start with so I'm gonna push down forward and then rotate it that way so it's a down into it forward and I you see I didn't go very far that time just a little bit so I'm gonna go down forward down forward I'm just gonna keep doing that until we create that edge and then once I got the edge I can start lifting it now once I get a little bit of the edge in there I'm gonna flip it I'm not holding it like a pencil anymore I'm gonna turn it over okay so again we're gonna go down forward So if we really want to undercut this and create that, that lift right there, what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to hold it like this. Okay? That gives, for me, that gives me the best grip on it. I'm going to put that, put it up under there, put the deer foot under there, and I'm just somewhat gently, somewhat firmly, working it back and forth. I can feel the, uh, the deer foot cutting the leather under there, and I'm just kind of working my way in. Once I've gone as far in as I think it's either going to let me go or as far as I want to go, then I'm going to push in and I'm going to rock it down. So the tail end of it goes down, which forces the front end up, and it creates that pocket, creates that lift. And that's how you do it. So I'm going I'm to do this half with the deer foot. And I'm going to do this half with the lifter. The, um, the smaller footprint on the, the small end tends to bite in easier. It's the difference in a scalpel versus a butter knife. So um, when, you get, when you're starting it, a lot of times the smaller end will make it a lot easier. Oh, and I, I, did, I don't think I mentioned what we're aiming for are these inside curves. really important that when you first start one of these pockets that you're very patient if you try to go too fast go too far be too aggressive you're going to rip the leather so in the beginning it's just little bitty push in the beginning it's just a little bitty push a little bitty lift and the more the more you're able to undercut it the more aggressive you're able to be If it doesn't want to bite, a lot of times what you'll have to do is focus on the downward push more, accent that more, and then push in. All right, we got one more on this side. So a little one right here. When the little when we do a little one, I want to keep this as subtle as I can. Not everything needs to be dramatic and just, you know, over the top. Sometimes these little pockets add as much as the big ones do cuz look. Now we got a roll here. It attaches here where our shading's at, and then it rolls again and comes back to the pocket. Okay? All right. So that's how you do it with a deer foot. Let's jump over and do it with the, uh, with the lifter. There's all kinds of lifters out there. This is just the one that I use. So again, 
please bear with me. I'm trying to make sure y'all can see and work around the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it, I'm going to start in the deepest part of that pocket. And you'll notice that's flat. So it's right here. That's flat. So I'm leaning it up on the toe of this lifter because I want it to bite in hard. So as I, as I tap it with my mallet, I'm going to push down and forward. Okay. I'm going to go down and I want it to bite in. slip happened because I'm working around the camera but it gave me a good chance to show you something so what we're doing you know you saw me work work it all the way up in there like that and then I started walking it so I rotated it this way hopefully you can see that so I went in this way and then when I got all the way in I rotated it and walked it out and I did that on both sides so another thing you'll notice this more or less destroys your beveling but that's okay because you can go back and rebevel up that and these marks will completely disappear. So don't worry about that. The point of beveling this before we did it was to give us access to the edge of it. We need this or the deer foot to be able to bite into that edge. That was the whole point of beveling it first. done with these pockets we got come, we're gonna come back we got one more step so that one's a little smaller so this one's a little smaller I'm gonna go with one of my smaller <laughs> lifters So here's another one that's kind of a sharp point right there. So this big rounded one doesn't really fit in there. So I'm going to go back to one of my other bevelers. That's why I bought the set. And that one fits in there. That's enough to get us started. <laughs> So this side's not done yet. You might think we are, but there's one more step. So what we're going to do, I'm going to hit it with some more water. So I hit it with some more water because the, uh, the leather needs to be wet for it to move when we do this. So this is the side that we just finished undercutting and lifting with the Barry King tool. Now what I'm going to do is what we did on the other one. So I'm going to come in here. I'm undercutting and I'm lifting. I can use this edge right there to clean that up. Just like that. So we're doing exactly what we did on the other one. We just used the, the uh, lifter to kind of give us a head start and give us an advantage. So if you look over here at the ones that we did that we haven't used this on yet, they're pretty flat. 
you know, we've got the undercut, but there's no lift to them. So that's why I use this. After I use the Barry King tool to undercut it, I'm going to come back with this. We're going to undercut it a little bit more, and then we're going to do that, that leverage move where we lift it using the deer foot. Like that. And you can see how much of a difference it makes. Look at these three versus these. So let's go ahead and finish these out. So as this dries, some of these will level out. You saw me put my hand up here and kind of flatten them out a little bit. I always go back before I put my sealer on and I relift these. It takes like five seconds, but it makes a huge difference. I'm gonna show you this. So I don't know if y'all can see that lit. Sorry, my hands are shaking. That little piece of leather that's sticking out right there. Somebody was asking me if that's normal. I, sorry, I bought the camera. I get those pretty frequently. All I do with them is I tuck them back up in there, and then when I antique it, it's going to hide all that. So that's just part of cutting leather. You're going to get those little pieces that show up, but the antique's going to hide. So I'll show you one more little trick. So when you look at a, a leaf, you're gonna see all these little, an actual leaf, you're gonna see all these little veins running just crazy little patterns all over it, right? The easiest way to put those in, you can see them right here, all right down through there. And believe it or not, that adds a lot to it. So I'm gonna grab my stylus. It doesn't matter what kind of stylus you have. I'm gonna grab my stylus, and all I'm gonna do is just scratch it in. I'm not scratching deep. I'm just doing enough to leave a mark on it. And I'm just being as random as I am capable of being. You know, humans, they're not very good at doing random. So I'm gonna keep doing that. Notice I'm not paying any attention to the veins, the curves, nothing. I'm just going through and I'm creating as much of a random pattern as I can. like to keep them small. The bigger you get, the less realistic it looks. So try to keep them small. That's it. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Let me know if there if you have any questions. Definitely put them in the comment section below. Um, love helping y'all with this kind of stuff. And um, I'm happy to answer as many questions as you need me to. So let me know. Appreciate it.